Kodak Retina Reflex S. This one I'm dealing with just for fun. It's out of my parts bins. I've got a new tool I want to try out. And I need to get a camera up to the state where I stage where I could use it. This one obviously doesn't cock. There's a bit of noise there from the capping plate so that I know the transfer shaft at least moves enough to push the capping plate down. No other action. Any other clues here as to the fate of this camera? Well yes, we've got this business, the leatherettes. Leatherettes are flapping. Someone's peeled those back, someone's quite possibly been in there, or at least investigated it. So what's inside this camera? I've got no idea. I'm not going to film the whole process, I'm just going to bring you back for any interesting highlights. Basically, I'm only doing this one to test a tool that I've made, that I should have made years and years and years ago. The strap lugs thumped in at this end, as I noticed when I went to get the screw out. Whether that will have had any bearing on this or not, I don't know. I've got the leatherettes off the front, but looking at the screws here, there's not much indication that someone went that far and opened the front up, but we'll find out. They may have had the front rings off and put them back in the wrong place. That'll certainly jam up cameras. Let's remove the front rings for good measure. I noticed they were somewhat reluctant to move. But that's not uncommon. There's a munch marks on this front mount. Um, this camera may have been rattling around in a box somewhere with other stuff and no lens fitted. those front rings to one side. Let's get those screws out first. Got the four screws missing from the front here now. Let's take out these pinions. I can lift this out probably. Is it going to come? It's out. Okay, I'll remove the shim washers, or the spring washers from the front of the camera. They're used to help you set the lens mount to film plane distance, which is adjustable in this camera. Um, the earlier retina reflex, it wasn't adjustable. Uh, so if there was any tilt, it meant there was no way of compensating for it unless you did something really interesting. Okay, so that looks good. Um, I can take the top cover back off now. Unhook the spring from the meter cord. The meter cord's present and not broken, which suggests that if someone had taken the rings off the front of the camera, they hadn't experimented by winding the wheel backwards and forwards until they got to the end of the string and broke it, which is a fairly common occurrence when people have investigated reflexes. Okay, I'm having a look at the state of this stuff. The capping plate, let's see if that latches down. Of course I've got its latch spring off at the moment. That that moves, doesn't look distorted. The mirror, that latch is in position. The control arms for those move up and down freely. That I would say is a very good sign. The camera was jammed solid. I'm looking at the pinion on the back of this transfer shaft. All the teeth appear to be there. The pinion from the front of that shaft, all the teeth appear to be there too. The cocking rack, 
Well, we don't know about the cocking rack yet. Let's delve in and see if that's any good. Or was there a fault with the film advance stopping the whole thing from moving? <coughs> Excuse me. The shutter was in some stuck in some midpoint in its range. Now that rack is right back, but that would be about yeah, that's what I would expect because that's been released. The shutter cocking rack looks good. No particularly obvious faults there. Oh, nothing particularly ugly. I want to check the shutter now and see if it can be cocked and if it releases. So I'll put this shaft back together, the front and rear halves, and see if this will allow me to cock that shutter. It doesn't want to open all the way. There's a fault there somewhere. That should cock and stay cocked and it's not doing it. So I think our problem lies in here, or a problem lies in here. This has been serviced before, I can tell, because the solder here is, has got no paint on it. Now normally you paint that after it's been soldered in place. The flash wire here is loose. That's come unsoldered from its post. Could that have been catching on something? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure we'll find out. So back to the body. I'm just going to strip this down, clean all these components, put this back together. And there's a fingerprint there, I think. No, there's some patch of muck here. I don't think it is a fingerprint, but there's some spludge on there, some something spoiling that mirror. Right, I'll strip this down. You don't need to watch this. Well I've dug down right to the shutter itself and certainly the fault lies here or a fault lies here. This will not stay cocked. So let's investigate a bit closer see if we can find out why that should be. Remove that retaining ring. Remove the shutter speed settings cam plate. That arm moves freely. That arm moves freely. Let's just pop that on there. That might hold it a little bit and just Watch what happens or doesn't happen. This certainly doesn't latch in. Has this been assembled incorrectly? Or is something bent? It's like this ring doesn't come around far enough. Alright, I have to investigate. Well, you can imagine the hands on the clock have whizzed round and round for a bit. And I'm back here with a complete shutter which you can see works normally. And what was the secret? Well this thing is the main drive cam for the shutter. It's got a strong spring on it and when it's released one of the arms picks up the uh, 
blade actuating ring and as this revolves it swings the blade actuating ring around. When it reaches the end of the stroke that disengages and there's another tab on the blade actuating ring on, on further over and that's picked up by that one which pulls it back. So the blade actuating ring swings out and back again. And this thing here, that's what does it. Now that's, that's a good one. That's what they're supposed to look like. I'll zoom you in a bit. That'll do nicely. Now you can see on this edge, you can see something sort of sticking out from the edge there. That's a piece of spring metal and it's spot welded in place. That's what it's supposed to look like. But here, that had come loose, that had come adrift. Why it broke free, I don't know. But that stray piece of metal there, which is not the shape it should be, it should be sort of pretty much dead flat, that's bent. That was jamming up underneath here whether it caught on something and tore off or whether it fell off and then jammed underneath I just don't know but that's what the problem was that thing was jamming this mechanism up so that it couldn't complete and that prevented the shutter from cocking far enough to latch into place so yes that's a bit unusual I don't remember striking that one before but that's what it was this time. But regardless of that, I've got a good working shutter again. And that would have been the key fault with this camera. And I will now reassemble the body and then put this back in place. Before you know it, I have a working camera again. Now I'm ready to put the front of the camera back in place on the body and to do this I've got a little bracket here that'll hold the spring on the front uh, cam now I've previously used something of a similar nature before just a little bit simpler in design it basically does the same job. But this is a little bit different. So we'll start with that. Um, I'll pop the top in my, my test top cover in place to keep the meter from falling off. If I sound like I'm a little bit paranoid about meters falling off the top of the camera, it's with good reason. As soon as your back's turned, the meter will fall out of place, the tension will be lost on the cord, and as a result, the cord will come off the pulleys. And you have to go through the whole tedious business of putting everything back. Right, so there's our camera body, ready for me to start. Now I'll put the main cam back in place that has to sit at a, uh, a specific orientation otherwise the mirror and capping plate won't work correctly so I'm just going to get that one notch over I think That looks good. I'll zoom you in so you can see the angle of that cam. Now what you're looking at is the angle of that cam, that rectangular piece across the front of the cam. It should sit at that angle. It's not at 45 degrees, it's not at 90 degrees, it sits about there. I'll zoom you back out. And get the front cam in place. Now 
I'm going to release the mirror now because it's going to be released anyway. So here's our front cam. That goes on that shaft. And there's a spring on it. It has to be wound up clockwise. Now normally I do this with a pair of tweezers and it's very, very tedious. But I've made a little tool to do this for me. I'm just making sure I'm counting it right. That's the first term. That's under tension there. It's under tension there. And I can hook that into that little bracket I made. Now my cam is all tensioned up. It's ready to go. So I'm going to put my washers in place. The spacing washers that go here. Now these washers are dished, they're arranged so they give the maximum amount of adjustment. In other words, they are, they are convex sides to convex sides, concave sides to concave sides. And this is to give us plenty of adjustment so that we can make sure that the lens flange to film plane distance is as it should be. This is the same setup on a Retina 3S rangefinder camera too, by the way. One there. And the one that got away while I was busy placing things. Let me find that. Right, this time I'll get this front on. I've got my meter cat drum is correctly positioned. This arm goes between those two arms there. I put this on from the, the bottom. Get it over the meter drum. Now it's sitting on this chrome trim here. Lift the chrome trim back slightly to allow that front to drop down. Just a little bit. To press the mirror so that it's not going to catch on the lip on the front of the camera. Just making sure my washers are aligned. I'm going to use two of the normal screws to hold this in at the base I haven't pushed that front right back haven't done anything like that at the top I've got two longer screws these screws began their life in the film advance lever on a retina they're too long to do this job but they're great for holding the uh, washers in place while you're assembling things. So my washers should be all trapped now, they can't get away. Tip the camera up, check that the mirror moves freely, push the cam across until it engages with the hole in the front of the body which is about there. Now, press the shutter release and holding this firmly between finger and thumb to keep it together, let's see if that'll cock. I can tell you on one notch out those blades aren't fully opening, so I've got to do that again. Now fortunately, the little bracket that I've put in the camera, that'll hold that spring on the front uh, cam. I don't need to go and fight that cam back in position as I would have done when I was using my previous method. Right, 
Right, so where are we? The cam's all in place, everything else is in place, washers, washers, washers. I've displaced the washers at the front here. Hit the top. These ones by the meter often just jump away. That's because the the magnetic flux from that meter will make steel things want to hop about anyway. Let's get those repositioned. That's one of the reasons I'm careful to get the screw through these ones fairly promptly. Okay, so that's all back at the start position. I've got a half cock shutter here. That's no use to me. I want to release that, so I'm just going to cock that completely with another cam and release it. That's fully fully released. That's wound right down. You must start with the shutter in the uncocked position. Okay, round two. Same as before. That's good. I'll get those long screws in position first because I don't want to lose my washers here at the top in particular. Just need to get that started. Doesn't need much. Here's the other one. It rolled off the bench, has it? Probably. It's okay. Where there's one, there's many. Yeah, none of the, the gears aren't engaged at the top of the camera yet. Got four screws in position. I can tip the camera up now because oh, there was that screw that got away, it stuck to the magnet on the back of the meter. Okay, so I'll push the cam across. I'm just going to check that that. cam in here is that should be it I think that's it I think that just clicked in okay that shutter's cocking and firing normally that's a very good position to be in so with that being the case I can just run these two screws at the bottom down lightly Replace the ones at the top with the correct length screw. Now I'll retrieve that bracket that I put in there to hold that spring. Because it's done its job, at the moment it's still holding that spring, I could take the front off again and it would still be holding the spring and I could put it back again. But I don't need to. Here's our bracket. And the spring's now released and it's sitting against the body, right here. That front part of the casting. So that was that basically, that's how to get the front back on and I can carry on with the rest of my normal setup which involves doing the focus adjustment and so forth but the thing I wanted to show you here was the use of this tool which as you can see has got a hole in the front of it here to engage the 
front of the cam. I'll show you how it works. So with this on the cam, this piece slides over the top. The slot engages with the spring. From the front you can easily wind up the tension on this. You can hook the spring into this little bracket, this little hook there in the bracket. And then that's done. That's cocked, ready to go. It's much easier using this than my old method which was to use a stiff pair of tweezers and fight to get that spring wound up. So I'm very pleased with this. Right, well I've shown you what I need to show you really. So I'm just going to finish this camera. This one is was only done simply to test out this tool before I um, use it on some poor customer's camera. Well it's all together, it's all working, it's a nice camera. Prism's good, nice tidy camera this one. I'm glad I put it back together and it'll go back into service somewhere. This one of course just came out of my parts boxes. It's one I've been given to use as parts and somebody had a go at repairing it. it, it hadn't gone well. The main problem of course was that little broken part in the shutter. But the reason I took this thing apart was to test that new tool I'd made to help me wind up the spring on that front transfer shaft that previously I've just been fighting with pairs of tweezers and it's always been a cumbersome process. It's much easier for me now. Um, I'm not sure it's going to take actually save me an awful lot of time but it'll save me some heartache. So there you have it. That was a, a successful tool making venture on my part for that one. And to be honest, I should have done that years and years ago. Thanks for watching.